Levan Pansulai perhaps has the most difficult task of his chess career. He has to win on demand against the one and only Magnus Carlsen, the greatest chess player in the world as on today, the highest rated chess player. In the first game of their match, it was Magnus who scored a win with the black pieces which has put Levan in a situation where he has to win with black. And this is not going to be easy, but he has to try. That's the unforgiving format of the World Cup. Magnus is writing down his score sheet. This is something that chess has stuck to from years together for players to write their score sheets, even though there's a digital board which records each and every move that is being played. In the background, we see the famous Steve Bonhager photographer taking pictures and we are ready to rock and roll here. Magnus with the white pieces. What is he going to play? The first move. He writes down everything and I'm sure he's going to now adjust all his pieces. That's his way of beginning the game. He's not worried about those 30 seconds that he's going to waste here or use. He's just putting all his pieces on their squares properly before he gets ready for the battle. Also, while doing so, he's getting his thoughts together on what he wants to play. It's the English opening that he wants to go for. And after making his move, he looks at Fabi's board there next as to what is he up to. Magnus likes to keep a track of all that's happening around him. Meanwhile, Levan Pansulai has to figure what is the best way to get his chances in this opening against Magnus. He plays the symmetrical English with C5. Levan is a very experienced grandmaster from Georgia and he has to bring all his experience into play today. Knight comes out to F3. And now Pansulai goes for G6. He's going to simply develop his bishop here. Meanwhile, Magnus hits the center. Now the most common way to play here is to take and then knight takes. But bishop g7 is an indication that Levan wants a complex game. He wants Magnus to push the pawn, gain space in the position. But in return, he's going to get a complicated game filled with imbalances. And there you see Magnus pushing his pawns, gaining space in the center. Now e6 played. This is some sort of a Benoni, but the knight is not developed yet on g8. Pawn up to h3, a useful move to prevent bishop g4 in future. Knight comes out on e7, that was the benefit of not developing the knight. Magnus brings out his knight on c3, and he's not afraid of any bishop takes c3 stuff, because then after b takes c3, the dark squares would get weak. So goes h6 and this is where Magnus sinks into a deep thought. Somewhere he's not so familiar with this position and he makes kind of an uncharacteristic decision. You could see that Magnus was not very pleased with his decision. He takes and plays bishop f4 and telling Levan that your pawn on d6 is weak. And Pansulai says, I don't care about the pawn Magnus. If you take with the queen... I am going queen a5 here, then getting my rook into the game. And Magnus takes it. He takes it with the queen. And now Levan is the one to think. Because if you take the queen, you will simply be a pawn down. So it's important not to trade the queens. And he goes queen a5, which is the best move in the position. He plays his queen there. Magnus brings his queen back. But now, some troubles there. Rook d8 could come in. The bishop is open. And there are many things to think about here. Pansulai goes with his knight. Where is he going? Ooh, he goes knight to b4. And his point is, he wants to play knight d3 check. Once again, Magnus goes for a think and plays a3. Not the best move. The best move was rook, d8, rook d1 to stop rook d8. But a3 is not the best. Because now, first, Levan hits the bishop with g5. Good decision. Because the bishop at some point could come back, you know, on this diagonal. But by pushing it away, you are making it go on the other direction. Also notice, you can never take this knight because the rook is hanging. So Magnus brings his bishop back to h2. And now, I think a good way to continue is rook d8. Look at, uh, at Magnus' time. He's down to 44 minutes. 
and that just shows that the position is quite complex. Magnus walking around, coming back, sitting. And now Levon plays rook to d8, hitting the queen. Queen c1, important move. Because if you had played knight d5, there is knight c2 check. So he goes queen c1 and now check. Magnus chops off the knight. I think the rook will take it. Yes, it does. For the time being, Magnus is a pawn up. But there is compensation. Look at this bishop. Look at this bishop hitting c4. And Magnus says, let me quickly get my king out of the danger zone. He castles it out. And now bishop takes c4. The material is even. Magnus jumps in with his knight. Knight to d5. He takes the knight. And now what does Magnus do? He captures it back. And guys, from Magnus being a pawn up, He's now going to be a pawn down because Levan can take this. So this is how things have changed. But one thing that is flowing in Magnus' favor is the king is still in the center on e8. And Magnus says, you are not getting away. If you castle, you lose the knight. So a nice move. But Levan brings his queen back to d8 and says, I'm all ready to castle. Magnus says, not so soon, sir. If you castle now, I will just take the knight and your rook is hanging here. So, okay. You can't castle, but Levon is touching his king. What is he doing? Oh, he goes king f8 and he breaks the pin. A good idea for Magnus now is to double down the e5, but he goes knight to e5. And now the advantage could shift hands. h5 followed by rook h6 is a great idea in this position. Slightly unconventional, but if you can get rook out on via this way, then the king is very well placed. But Levon goes knight c6. And he's saying to Magnus that if you take here, I'm very fine with my doubled pawns because then your knight is gone. Rook d1, fantastic move played because if rook takes d1, there's a mate in one here. You can't play that. So he goes knight d4, good move. And now Magnus plays king h1. So as to avoid any further tricks by the knight with knight f3 business or knight e2 check. Queen d3 played and now Magnus is taking over the initiative h5 played by Levan but a bit too late because now Magnus has some tricks just notice how Magnus plays this part of the game it's brilliant knight c6 played the knight cannot be taken because the rook is hanging so you have to move the queen but where to move the queen wherever you go there's some problem queen b6 is the best square but now Magnus with 21 minutes on the clock fans knight e7 brilliant chess hitting the rook the rook has to move and maybe going back to d8 is the smartest. Yes, he goes to d8 back. Now, the knight can actually go to f5. That is possible. And he plays it. Knight f5 hitting the bishop. Bishop f6 is the only move. But he blunders with queen g6. He's missed a move. Magnus taking his time. He has 22 minutes. But there is a brilliant move here for white. Can Magnus find it? Of course he does. Bishop c7. If the rook moves away, there is bd6 check followed by knight e7 winning the queen. And so rook d7 is the only move here. But now Magnus has seen the winning combination. Can you spot it? It is a rook sacrifice here. Will Magnus play it instantly? Will he take his time? He's just calculating the final variations. It's a very pretty move. Let's see. There you see Magnus just emoting saying, wow, that looks nice. I have played many great games, but I think this one is really pretty. And with 18 minutes on the clock, he finds rook e8. Because if you take here, there is queen e4 check. The queen king has to go here. And then it's a mate here. Whatever you do, even if you interpose with the queen, there is queen a8. And so after rook e8, Levan has no other option but to resign. Even if he goes king e8, queen e4, knight e6. Queen a8 is a checkmate, especially beautiful, is this mate with the queen sacrifice at the end and that is game over. So after rook e8 right now, Levan taking his time to see if there is any defense and he gives his hand in resignation, telling Magnus, very beautiful mate there, very nice and uh, I think that was very nice finish there where both the players smiled at each other, Magnus analyzing at the end and he's saying, h5 should have been played sooner to get your rook out and that is true but well fought by levan pansulai he played a brilliant game 
to put magnus on the ropes and make him stretch it's never easy to do that and i i believe this will be a special game for him and also for magnus because of the finale combination that he executed uh, with this magnus scores 2-0 victory in the world cup moves to round number 3 where he will face his country mate aryan tari and that is going to be a very interesting battle norway has two players and both of them will clash against each other it's always a pleasure seeing magnus play and i hope you enjoyed this game